Hi guys, thanks so much for joining me here today. My name's Halen. I sat down this morning wanting to just do a collective reading. So it could be for all of you, it could be for just one of you. If this resonates with you, you can contact me for a private reading. My information's in the description box below. I My intention in pulling these cards was a reading for the collective. And the cards I have here on the table are kind of mind-blowing, like where it, where it's leading us to. Uh, I'm even thinking now it's kind of like when you join the big leagues or something like that. That's how I feel like the energy is ramping up. So the beginning of this year was kind of like even just biding time because it feels like things are starting to really elevate and ramp up. Where we're coming from, which is kind of perfect and fitting, where we're coming from, right, is this uh, lunar eclipse, this change. And to me, it's looking like something or someone was lost. So if you have a person in your star family who is a bit of a lost soul, or if this has been the feeling that you have had, I don't know why I keep getting that for some of you, it's someone outside of you that you could love very deeply, very dearly, and feeling like, um, like there's like, like there's this loss. Because what's showing up here is this tidy house, right? How you want everything to be, like everything in its right place. If you know that song by Radiohead, but it's like Lost in Space, right? The Lost in Space card. But what's showing up here is treasures hidden in the shadows, which is always that idea that there's grace, sorry, there's grace hiding in the darkness. There's grace not hiding. It's actually in the darkness that the grace emerges. So it's through experiencing pain, grief, loss that this grace arises. So it's sort of like um, doing things backwards or inverted in order to get a desired result. So it's kind of making me think of homeopathic medicine, right? Like you give a bit of the poison and that's actually the remedy. It's kind of like that. It's like you wouldn't have experienced such a heightened state of awareness if you hadn't experienced this grief or this loss or this darkness or this pain. So that's where the grace actually lies. It's the treasure hiding in the shadow. So we're moving into this sort of energy now where it's showing your destiny, Yod. And I think I'm saying that right. And what's showing up here is Breath of the Cosmos and Called, right? And it's like you're being called to your destiny. And look at all this. You got Herald of Change, right? The Overwhelm and Plenty. So this is going into an entirely new state of being and yet there's this obstacle here. There's this wall. And I can see that you're being called to sort of bust through that barrier. So if you're being called to face the music, face the fire, face your destiny, what is this for you where you're being called to step into the big leagues to no longer play small? Uh, it's coming out very clear. Is my lighting okay in here? I'm trying to figure out my setup in here. It's new. It's very bright behind me. I'm like glowing. I'm, I'm, I'm an angel. Um, <laughs> we're at a tarot reading. Um, but yes, so I can get more to clarify, but I don't really feel the need to. I feel like you're being called to break down barriers, even things that have been like in your genes, like your um, your your gene code is what I'm sort of thinking here. Uh, and it's even this idea that like, it's like I'm thinking of the birth chart with all those symbols there and that big wheel on top. And it's like making your birth chart work for you, not feeling limited or like you're enclosed or contained by your birth chart, but actually making it function like a, a wheel of destiny for you, more like your dharma rather than like people's idea of karma being this cage or this thing, this storybook that's pre-written that can just like limit you. That's not what we're here to do. And I feel like that's where you're um, uncaging. This is the uncaging of you. So. Um, things are finally feeling like they're back on track too. like things are, are happening. You've got routine, the sixth house, where we're, where we're headed now. This is like where we're headed, okay? The routine, the sixth house. So you're being called to, um, there's more to this here. Hold on one second. 
you're being called to change things up. I will say that because this is making me think of Da Vinci and like the perfect man or something. I don't know. So Starkeeper and I'm sorry, Cosmic Ancestor and then I'm sorry, which is about writing past wrongs, uprooting. Look at these two energies coming together and the Starkeeper is reminding me of it's actually making me think of Anubis. Isn't he the one who, um, it's not Anubis, but it's this sort of Egyptian, but it's making, it's the Sphinx, but it's making me think, isn't it? I actually don't know, but it's making me think of um, the gatekeeper to hell um, or the underworld, or is it even to the underworld or is it just the ethers? It's interesting. Oh, but look, it's, well, it's making me think of the underworld here. Why? With the roots. And then this idea of perfection here. And so that's interesting because what's coming out, I don't know what these are saying. There's lay of the land, which again is about an ancestor. And then it's the perfect storm, which is the courage to step into life, right? That destiny calling, the playing, we're no longer playing small. And then here's the dream thief. Oh, okay, so so my son's name is um, Ari. And uh, we were watching a show last night and there was a character in it that was named Ari and we were laughing. And you know when the TV talks to you, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> that happens also to people in psychosis, so you know. But um, that's how life speaks to me. It's through the forms. Like, I gotta show you guys. I'll show you guys soon the stuff, the 4D stuff that I get in physical reality that's like, what? Um, it's, so I'm not just making it up, you know what I mean? It's things that I physically, like, receive or touch or see, and then it just is like, what's going on? Um, and I was watching this show. This is just like that show. The Three Caballeros. Um, on Disney Plus with my son last night. And there were some other really funny, really funny synchronicities in that show. Um, and what happens in that show, it's even what I was saying about like being locked into your karma rather than your dharma. Um, it's the first episode and I don't think any of you are, <laughs> you are gonna go watch. It's like a DuckTales sort of thing or something. I don't know. Um, but and it's kind of like three musketeers or whatever. And I only got so far in it. But what happens is, is that they inherit this old estate. And then um, this wealthy man is trying to buy it from them because he knows there's this sacred book in there. When they open this book of the gods, this woman comes out. Oh, my son loves this game, Fortnite. And right now, I play it with him, it's very fun. And so right now, um, there's like these Greek gods, this mythology theme going on. And in the, the show that had his name in it and everything, when we were laughing, out opens this, um, and it's speaking about Hades, right? The underworld, out comes this, uh, every time they open it, a woman appears. And she's this goddess of adventure or something. And she's kind of like Z Zena, is that her name? Zena, like the warrior princess. She's kind of like her. Um, she's Greece, Greek, <laughs> she's from Greece. <laughs> Sorry. And so what happens in the show is she's like, well, who are you? How long has my book been closed? Because she has been tethered inside of a book, inside of a book, kind of like her karma. Instead of being able to live her dharma, she's bound into this book by this, basically the devil. And um, it's making me think of Hades a bit, right? And it's like, why did he bind her into this book? And she wants to escape, but her message and her meaning and all of that in, in the book are to help the three caballeros. And the three caballeros are these like regular guys. They're these, they're three ducks. Um, but they are actually the descendants of the original three caballeros. And so she's like, how long has my book been closed? And she's meeting Donald and his brothers or whatever the fuck. And um, she realizes that they're the descendants. And so it's kind of like they have to start all over. And so they get these like, they're like the three chosen ones and they get these amulets and they have to fight the dark forces, basically the devil with this woman guiding them and leading the way to hopefully help her break out of the book, um, but also to like save the world from evil forces, from dark forces, because it was this guy, I've got to figure out what it was, because it was like, 
Oh, it was so funny. He he basically changed the, he, he took over the entire universe. <laughs> like, oh, so I guess this was like a, a movie uh, back in the day. Um, oh, I want to know what it was so badly because it was so, I don't know. I don't know. Um, the Legend of the Three Caballeros. He basically took over the universe, and what it represented to me was basically like, um, that's why they end up saying to the guy with the million dollars, they're like, no, I don't want your million dollars, because they're like, you can't put a price on um, our family and what we're here to do and our purpose and everything else, right? Like, they're not going to play small and just, like, accept a million dollars and burn through it in the end. They're going to, like, live up to their destiny. And so what's interesting is, is that they go through these tests and things because they have to sort of be like Hercules, right? Another Greek, uh, what am I trying to say here? Metaphor, whatever. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Uh, trying to prove themselves that they're worthy and capable um, of defeating this dark energy. And so what's showing up here is it's kind of like there's this barrier to busting out of your karma or the book, so to speak, maybe the matrix, right? I mean, I don't know. Um, and it could be like this kind of belief system that's been in place by this thing that kind of took over on the, in the show. I really wanted to look up like what exactly it did when it took over because it basically created these different realms that they have to travel into in order to defeat this dark force and multi-dimensional uh, levels and, and it's very interesting. So um, when it happens there, it happens here and they they like blip around. It's, it's like time travel. It's pretty cool. So this it. <laughs> Disney shows these days, I tell you, they're like very deep. So um, the sixth house and then whatever this is, this gatekeeper down into hell is how this feels to me. Well, this feels like just like that show where they have to answer the call to defeat the dark entity. So it is like they're suddenly playing in the big leagues and they're gonna like fulfill their destiny even though they're a bunch of like doofuses. It's very cute because um, it's about like, it's almost as if this ancestor here, right, is sort of like, this is the p path that I've given you. Look, I am the perfect man, <laughs> but this is the path that I've given you. And it doesn't need to be a specific ancestor, right? Please follow in my footsteps. This is what I've left behind. And I need you to continue on the legacy of, of helping to heal this or fix this. So it's, um, it's essentially facing the dream thief which is that guy of the universe who I really want to look it up. Like why, what did he do? Because he's essentially trying to steal them of their, steal the universe of its full potential. Let's see, let's see, let's see. They were the descendants of a trio of adventurers who long ago traveled to stop the evil sorcerer, Lord Feldrake, from taking over the world and ultimately sealed him and a magical staff. Oh, that's right, but then he like comes out, he's unleashed. Meanwhile, the staff containing Feldrake is discovered by his descendant, and as he sets out to revive Feldrake, the new three caballeros must learn to become heroes to save the world from disaster. So this is like Lord Feldrake is who I'm trying to see, and there was a whole thing of why he did what he did. He's a, an extremely powerful dark wizard. His most notif noticeable use, hold on. Um, yeah, he's trying to, It's he's even taken over Xandra. It kind of reminds me of in the movie Hercules, which we also, I watched with my son because of all of the Greek mythology and Fortnite. And in Hercules, there was this whole thing going on with Meg and Hades and Hades sort of like had control over Meg through some strange soul contract or something like that um and that's kind of what it looks like has been happening with this Xandra character so she has to play within his game in this book to beat him he he placed a powerful and ancient curse that sealed Xandra in her magical atlas 
he's capable of spell casting, but is not very powerful as he states. He can destroy the Caballero's mystical barrier if he wasn't imprisoned. So he's this dark magical wizard. He was once a dark sorcerer that sealed a benevolent goddess in her golden atlas, which allowed him to build an army of monsters to conquer the cosmos. However, he was foiled by three knights known as the original three caballeros who used their powers to seal him away inside of his own staff, while his magic ring and some of his other effects were stashed away in the collection of Clinton Coote, the great-grandfather of Donald Duck. For centuries, Feldrake's staff was kept in storage in the shelled goose estate in a hidden room. So, rising back to power, so he basically comes back to life as, as through his descendant, and then through the descendant of the three caballeros, they come back to life. Okay. <laughs> My good God. Ah, so, do you see how these ancestors are all living through their descendants here? It's like this epic story continuing to play out once again, and it could have been an ancient story. That's what I'm getting. I hope that this is making sense. My goodness, because it feels like, again, what I said, the big leagues, things are, things are ramping up. If you look at this energetically and not as like a person um, and like you're the actual three musketeers, uh, what this is saying is, is that it's like, how far can you take it in your psyche? This is what it's saying to me. To uncover and unveil the truth of your inherent and divine destiny rather than being swayed by a dark or evil force. We'll call it evil. Um, because what that does is it just instills fear. And if you were to live your life with zero fear, what would that look like? How would that look? What would that be like? How would that feel? So where you're headed is Saturn, truth. And this is truth that Saturn is, he doesn't play games, you know? Saturn is a... Uh, It's no bullshit. And it's, the thing is, is that it doesn't need to be negative. Like people can get scared of Saturn and think, oh, the truth, I'm so scared. But truth, when it's incredibly powerful and beautiful, like the truth of uh, God, or the truth of, of something in its positivity, that's something that could absolutely leave people shell-shocked. Um, but it doesn't mean it's negative. In fact, I don't think any, time there's truth with a capital T, I don't believe it's negative. So you're rising up here and it's showing water your garden, body care, nourishment, tenderness, water your garden, and then lifting the veil. Anything that's unaligned must go. That's that truth with a capital T. So this is about your garden, your energy, what you want here in this reality, right? It's sort of like the three caballeros and what they're going to fight for is to unveil the truth here, to no longer have, to no longer be bound into a, a book that is uh, not of their own design. And it's like a book that tells them, uh, you know, it's that idea that money, I mean, that's what the show is sort of saying is that this idea of money reigning supreme for your survival, for your thriving, for your, for your, for your thriving. So here you've got deep diver diving into a task, the roses kiss and one ring circus. It's kind of like this whole idea that it's, it's all up to you. It's making me think of this song. Um, I always mention these songs by Hosier. That's all that I've really listened to that's new. Um, and there's the song Shrike. Or no, there's this song, As It Was. Let's hope at the fight of my baby. Wait, what is it? And the lights were as dark as my babe. Oh, was I my babe? Oh, was I? Hold on. As It Was, Hosier. In the eyes at the heights of my baby, and this hope at the fight of my baby, 
And the lights were as bright as my day. But your love was a moon. And the sights were as stark as my baby. And the cold was as sharp as my baby. And the nights were as dark as my baby. The half is beautiful too. It's this idea that it's like, let's let's hope the fight of my baby. I feel like that baby, <laughs> you're his baby. Um, <laughs> you're his baby. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying though? It's like, let's, it's like the baby of those descendants. It's like, let's hope the fight of you here. Because you're the one who's here to quell this storm, to go in and like nip it at the bud. And it's here for you to accomplish this. And it's not necessarily any, it could be something physical. I mean, maybe you're like out there like fighting for an inheritance or what's right or justice or social justice. Um, but I feel like to me, this is a spiritual, it's an energetic battle. At the bottom of the deck, of course, you have Chiron and you have this card here, weight of the world. And that's it's speaking to me about, um, Well, it's funny because it initially spoke to me about battles that aren't yours. But this battle that you're fighting, it's just as much yours as it, as it has been everyone else's for like maybe even millennia or for a very long time here. Um, and it's this. You're fighting this dragon's lair. You're fighting hell. You're fighting the state of fear. And in order to fight the state of fear, it's, you have to do it kind of like in the movie, um, every, everything everywhere all at once. You have to fight it with love. If you fight it with um, more fear mongering, it doesn't work. It's kind of like all this light behind me, right? It's like, cast the holy water, right? <laughs> at, the, at the darkness, throw the light at the darkness, throw love at the fear. Um, but it's walking in your belief and your belief has to be to the state of like knowing and um, not faltering in that. And we can all slip into fear and for very um, well-meaning reasons, right? Like very um, serious reasons. But the way to conquer this is through it with love so it's sort of like again that idea of like going into the darkness in order to spread the light so much light in my room going into something dark in order to bust it out from the inside to implode it and if this is a soul i want to say this if this is not just you um but this is also maybe someone that you know that's going through a difficult time this might be the process of what they're going through they have to go in it deep in it in order to eradicate it. And when they eradicate it, it's not just for them. Isn't that even like a three musketeers thing, like all for one and one for all kind of thing? That's how this feels. Um, and that's where there is that grace, there is that gift. There's, um, there's a meaning in it. Right, like there's a, there's a, a, what is it, like a rhyme to the reason or whatever, like it, there's, there's, it's divine. And it is actually healing this for the collective. But we all have to do it on an individual, an individualistic level. This has been an interesting reading. We have to do it within and this rose here represents the heart to me a lot of the time it's the blossoming and opening of the heart to real faith um well essentially to god to grace um and we have to do that's a, that's a that's a one-man job no one can do it for you right you you have to it's that thing you have to do on your own people can guide you to it absolutely um you know, angels. It's like that Zandra goddess of adventure girl from the Three Caballeros that she can guide you to it. Um, but it's up to you to actually slay that dragon. And I'm going to leave it here. Should we get, let's get a Journey of Love Oracle for the uh, collective here. 
All right. You know what it sort of feels like? It feels like the rising of a bunch of angels against um, all in their own individualistic way, right? The Armageddon is on the inside against what I would call that Lord Feldrake, what I would call the devil, essentially, which is this uh, brainwave, this, this frequency, um, this idea that you there's not enough. Um, or this idea of a curse, you know? And it's kind of like voodoo when you believe in it, you make it real, right? <laughs> it's kind of how it is, but it's, it's the collective consciousness and what we all choose to believe. It's like that hundredth monkey syndrome. When enough of us choose to not feed it, not believe in it, the scales will tip. that Rumi quote it's through the womb that the light enters something like that here it is the breaking you have the breaking and loving all that is and I don't even know if I really need to read the book because I remember I'll find it because I'm not gonna say it properly but the breaking basically says let go and break it is going to be the making of you that's what it says <laughs> let go and break Maybe allow them to fully break. Wait, whatever this is, it's going to be the making of you. It's going to be, be the making of them. Loving all that is exactly as it is. I'm going to end this here. Because this is for a reason. This is all for a reason. And time doesn't care. Saturn is time. And Saturn is truth here today. So the unveiling of truth, the amount of time it takes is null. It doesn't matter. This is what matters. This is what matters. And that's when we start focusing on the collective we rather than the individualistic I, because we can break out of that egoic desire for ourselves of simple baseline stuff and recognize what it means for the all. And that's why we sign up for the things that we do, like the three caballeros, right? That's why we choose to do it. It's your destiny, it's your purpose, it's for the all, it's for the collective, it is not about you and your million dollars and you know whatever for like the three caballeros now i'm going to end it thank you so much for being here with me i'm going to title this reading the three caballeros and lord feldrake all right you guys <laughs> thank you i hope you have a beautiful day bye